pleasure for all of us to return to the awesome Northwest, the Emerald City of Seattle, for the $132,500 Seattle Open at the Skyway Park Bowl. Seventh year that we've had a telecast from here, and it's always delightful to come back and meet these friendly people. Our field of four today, four non-winners. Let's meet them. First from Lawton, Oklahoma, longtime friend Bill Oaks. Bill uh, has his work cut out for him. He meets a fellow veteran from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, named Curtis Odom. The winner of that first game will meet second-seeded Ed Richardson of Corpus Christi, Texas. Our tournament leader doesn't look old enough to even to apply for a driver's license. Here he is from Stockton, California, Steve Fields. The newly crowned Seattle Open champion, the then bowl Fresno Open winner, Randy Peterson for the King of the Hill bragging rights. Here's a man we brag on often, rightfully so, 19th year on our telecast here on ABC, my colleague, Nelson Burton, Jr. Bo. Thank you, Chris. Uh, interesting field here today, and Seattle Open historically has terrific scores, and this year is no different. The players in the championship round today have averaged over 231 combined for five days of play leading up to today's round. Now, Chris says an unusual field, and only the second time in the 35-year history of the PBA are all the combatants in the finals without a title. So it'll be interesting to see how they handled the pressure and the pressure of qualifying for the $1 million General Tire Tournament of Championship Series. Chris, that's a lot of money, and there's a lot of money at stake today in the championship round. And out of that total of $132,500, $21,000 will go to the winner. Runner-up is 10, third, 75, and fourth, $6,000. Or in other words, the loser of our first game will uh, leave with a check for six. A handshake, Curtis Odom. Seated while 37-year-old Bill Oakes in his eighth television appearance. His best ever was fourth. He was fourth seed this year in uh, Cleveland. So here he goes again. First shot. All right. Curtis Odom, 35 year older from Winston Salem, North Carolina. This year he was ninth in the Leisure Open out on Long Island, his best of the year. Curtis with a just a very simple style as he's quickly up on the approach to shoot the 10 pin using a little different ball, looking at his style very quickly. Five step delivery, he threw that shot. And a cross lane for the 10 pin. Here's the Aztec crowd, standing room. A little later, uh, our sideline reporter today is um, BBA national champion Jim Pensack. We'll hear from him interviewing uh, the next up pros. Notice Curtis with that short backswing, a very accurate player. some accuracy to cover the 6 7 10 as he got a bit soft with his speed right there cutting right through the middle now Curtis is gonna have to get to the left side of the approach throw the ball a little bit harder across lane try to slide that six over into the seven Most experienced of the four professionals who have made our finals here in the Seattle Open, Curtis Odom. His 12th television appearance. Actually, uh, Bill Oak's best finish ever was second to Mike Albee in Green Bay in 1992. Rob. A little bit wide. You see the style of Bill Oaks, very similar to that of Curtis Odom. Five-step delivery, short backswing. And one of the keys is that left foot, how they pivot off the left 
into the right, his arm swing at a full length, and driving straight underneath the ball, gets a bad break as the head pin goes to the sideboard. Doesn't quite take out the 10, but no problem for Bill. He and his wife, Patty, parents of Lauren and Nicholas. All three back in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. He's trying to build a new home in Lawton. Uh, mm -hmm. A nice $21,000 paycheck would go a long way for a uh, down payment and put some extra nails in that house. And uh, he's ready to win. Let's see how he does here in the third frame. Oh, the Texans. Two strikes in three frames, marking with a spare in the other. And Odom is now up. He had uh, a spare in the first, and then he opened, as you remember, when he left a 6 7 10. Come on. Come on. Beautiful. Come on. Curtis Odom. His creativity is not just limited to bowling centers like Skyway Park. Well, lately I've been writing some poems, but more so I've been writing songs and have some studio quality demos done, and I'm trying to get them published. I have some R&B songs and also have uh, one rap song that I'm trying to get published. We wish him luck. One time. Leaving a four pin on the left lane. And Curtis has had no luck so far as he's been a little bit high on the left hand lane two times. He changes to a different bowling ball for a cross lane spare and if he makes this spare he will trail by 14 pins we're in the uh, south area of seattle washington for the seattle open we'll take a break and then return first this this view overlooking lake union one of the many reasons why we love to come back here look at it portion of the Skyway Park Bowl in Seattle, Washington, where Bill Oaks is meeting uh, head-on Curtis Odom. Bill leading by 14 pins, but with the strike up, shooting in the fourth frame could go ahead by 24. For Bill Oaks, the Seattle Open has a very special significance. Seattle's special to me because I got my, my first wins in the championship round here, and uh, I like bowling in Seattle because the fans are great, and I feel like today that I can win in the championship round, and that's what I'm going to try to do. His confidence is high, and he can take a 34 pin lead here. Imagine none of the four has won a PBA national title. Regionals, yes. So today... It's like the jockey who rides his first time ever winner. They will break their maiden. Come on. Wired for sound. Can't seem to get on track. Uh, Curtis being a little tentative with his strike ball, his first shot a little soft. He was very aggressive all week long. I think when he converts his spare, he'll move on to more speed. Next shot. So Curtis taking a long, hard look at the score sheet projected uh, to our right at the far end for spectators. And there are many here today as Richardson and Randy Peterson stay loose off to the right. That's why you hear the pinfall. He had surgery last year in his right wrist. Slightly torn ligament and bone spur. Missed 11 months of the tour. But he has come back and today shows it, having finished third in the overall field to be on our telecast. Now, Bill Oaks to go ahead by 45.
right now. Oaks just to completely in the driver's seat to strike a 10 pin in the second frame and four perfect hits as he knocked all 10 pins in the pit is as is, is confident as I've ever seen him in his PBA career. He likes Seattle, as he said, and he really, really wants to get a win. Obviously, you got to get by that first match. All right, pouring it on, stringing them together. Skyway Park Bowl in Seattle. Speaking of Seattle, how about this view? Um, it's beautiful skyline from Kerry Park. Is nearing its end, and Curtis Odom going against a tiger named Bill Oaks, who has strung five, leads by 55, but Curtis has a strike up now, shooting in the seventh frame. Nothing good has happened for Curtis Odom so far in this match. That was a key shot right there, and he leaves the solid eight. You see from the low angle, he's playing around the center of the lane, swing out to the seventh board, drives the five pin straight back off the eight. And if he got that strike, he would have gotten that strike. He'd been right back in the match. Okay, the 1990 PBA National Champion, Jim Pensack, is our interviewer today, and here he is. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we have Ed Richardson here, and uh, he's on his first show and, and really excited. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened last night uh, for you to make the show. Well, last night I was going into the 10th frame, and I knew if I marked, I'd be in second place. But I went up and threw a ball a little slow and ended up leaving a split. And I just knew someone told me, I said, if you get two, you're going to miss the show by one and end up in fifth. And I said, well, if you're going to go for it, just go for it. And ended up getting the spare and ended up making a strike after that and making the show. Great. Congratulations, and uh, good luck today. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen. And you saw Curtis Odom as he got only his third strike in this first game. Now here's Oaks, five in a row, shooting in the eighth. A 10-pin. Not disturbing for Bill here in the eighth frame because he has this match well in hand. Uh, He's going at a 239 pace. The best Curtis Odom can do if he strikes out is 215. So Bill Oaks, just maintain your concentration, maintain your timing, and he'll be going on to meet Ed Richardson in the semifinal. All right. Bill Oaks, who has one second, two thirds, one fourth, one fifth. Area bowlers like Brian Voss from Tacoma now bowling out of Boca Raton. He finished 13th. Seattle's Hugh Miller finished 15th. The grip of Billy Oaks just uses a normal, what we call fingertip grip, down to the first knuckle of the fingers. Lift straight behind the ball. Great shot. Odom, sorry, Chris, mm -hmm. who okay. attended Winston-Salem University. Got to see a lot of pro bowling when we used to bowl in Winston-Salem, mm -hmm. North Carolina at Major League Lanes. Possible 215 game. Bad shot, bad shot. Like a baseball pitcher, just didn't have that rhythm today. He's fast on one shot, slow on the next, and just couldn't put it together. Not a bad score, but Billy Oaks is red hot. And Curtis only came back since February from the wrist surgery, so he is improving. All right, Saturday, June 26th on ABC Sports, Professional Bowlers Tour continues its roll through the West. The world's best bowlers take their best shot at the Oregon Open. Live action begins at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central. That's in two weeks, right here, ABC Sports. A disappointed Curtis Odom, possible 181, but he bowled solid all week long. I watched him on Thursday, I watched him on Friday, and his game is back intact. He just uh, a little off today. Another split here would be in the high 160s. 
Not an enjoyable 15 minutes for him, but a solid paycheck. So it's $6,000 for Curtis Odom, adding to his uh, 9,245 that he's won um, already this year. Bill Oaks won his first championship match on television, never a title, right here in Seattle. A couple of years ago, the confidence carries over into his first match against Curtis Odom today with a possible 259, and more importantly, he's going against another untested rookie almost in Ed Curtis. Bill Oaks smiling because of a big game and continuing to stay loose. Ed Richardson, who will meet Bill in our second match, the semifinal match of the Seattle Open. So with that strike, 259 to Curtis Odom's 169. So ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Fisher Nuts. It's Fisher flavor or it's just plain nuts. And by A1 Steak Sauce. A1, it's how burgers are done. In Seattle at the Skyway Park Bowl, a big first game for Billy Oaks of Lawton, Oklahoma. Ten strikes, 259. Curtis Odom shot a 169. Now going against Richardson. Ed Richardson of Corpus Christi in our second match here in the Seattle Open. Solid field here, Chris. Uh, 160 players went to the starting gate. It was an excellent scoring tournament this week. As you see, the average game, 218, 225 to make the top 24. And that is after 24 games. Some of the other finalists, Jason Couch just missed. George Branham, the first entry in the General Tire Tournament Champions next year. The Rock in 10th place, The Wizard. Harry Sullivan says hi to Tracy, a friend in New York. Bob Benoit, Lorinda is better half working for us. Bill Young, solid. Jim Pensect, our guest host today on the sidelines. Missile Man McCune, 22nd. Randy Peterson, who will be in the King of the Hill match, who won the Fresno tournament last week, rounds out the top 24. Will be in Oregon in two weeks for the PBA Oregon Open, Chris, and then down to the hot country as we head down to Tucson to see Pete Tonis for the finals July 10th of the Tucson Open. Oregon in two weeks are breaking a PBA record with 3,000 at least Pro-Am participants. Portland, Oregon in two weeks for our ABC Sports Telecast. Here he is, 6'1", 185-pound, Ed Richardson. First ever television appearance, national TV. And he has left a 10-pin on the left lane. Boy, that's a tough shot, those first couple of frames. My goodness. That heart's beating about 180 beats a minute. That follow-through gets shorter, and sometimes you wonder what I did out there. But he needs to make this spare and not beat himself in the early going. Look out. Look out. Tough first frame. Ed Richardson misses the 10 pin. Watch his follow-through here. He just barely goes, look at that. Barely didn't even mm -hmm. get the shoulder level. When a player is loose, you can see his follow-through reaching for the sky gets longer. Let's watch Billy Oaks, who has a tendency to short follow through the shot. And see, he's won a shot. Oh. He follows through, but sends it wide. And hung it on the edge, Bo. <laughs> well, two Texans here uh, spraying it around a little bit. Watch this shot, heading out to almost uh, the, uh, uh, uh. the Ballard board comes back to the one, two, four, eight. That's a lot more difficult spare with the four pin in there. He has to hit it just right on the left side of the head. All right, that's a spare for the first game winner. 
Bill Oaks, coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, top gymnasts go for gold. It's the men's all-around final of the World Gymnastics Championships, plus the Advil Mini Marathon from New York City. And hold on to your handlebars as mountain biking goes extreme. All next, ABC Sports. Ten strikes in his first game victory. Gets another second frame of his second match. And now let's see how Ed Richardson, 32-year-old, a nine-year PBA veteran, how he rebounds his five regional titles. Great. Sign of a professional, Nelson. You're right, Chris, and he has beautiful form. All he has to do is employ it, and he throws an excellent shot here. Everything's steady. Look at how well-balanced he is in this area. He's going to pivot on to his left foot. The arm swing's coming straight through. Watch the follow-through. goes much higher this time. See, above his head, that means he extended to the target, and he can rectify that open in the first frame with a double here in the third. So now, Bill Oaks is back up. Has a good luck charm on his right collar given to him by his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, two bowling pins with a bowling ball. So a double now has put Bill Oaks in the lead by 11 pins over Ed Richardson. What excitement last night going into the final match here at Skyway Park Bowl. 13 bowlers had a chance to make the telecast field of four. And only 108 pins separated second from 13th. Well, that was an amazing finish. And you factor in there, that's 47 games and 30 pin bonus factored into that also. Great pin. Three bagger for Billy Oaks. We're in our second match. 21 pin lead. We're in Seattle where one of the popular stops on the city's cultural tour is Seattle's Art Museum. Columbia introduces the new power toy. It's beyond reactive. Columbia holds the world over. 32-year-old Ed Richardson, his first national telecast, five regional PBA wins, trailing. Wanted to close the gap as he had a double up, but he's left the 10 pin on the right lane. See what happens here in the first frame. He left the 10 pin as you see him from the overhead. He's coming up to the foul line, coming pretty solid, and ends up in the center of the lane. A pretty good shot, however, leaves a solid 10. Conversion here, he trailed by 22. Seattle area has a great history of professional bowling going back to 1962. While Jim Pensack, our PBA national champion, wasn't there in 62, but he's been here before, just like he's here as our interviewer today, Jim. Thanks, Chris. We're here with uh, Steve Fields, the tournament leader, uh, his first TV show. How are you feeling right now? Um, quite nervous, actually, <laughs> right now. It hasn't, I haven't come down yet. This is unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you, with your performance over the course of this tournament and your domination, uh, just got to ch channel that nervous energy. Good luck to you. Thanks. Uh, I'll definitely need the luck. It's been on my side all week, so hope I can keep it going. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Stephen Fields. I wasn't kidding when I said he looks very young, but he is 24. Boy, you could see the emotion in his eyes, mm -hmm. the quiver in his voice, but he's a superman with that bowling ball in his hand this week. Now the man who is in the lead right now by 22, Bill Oaks. Ten pen for Bill. Looking down at his shoe like he had stuck on the approach or something, and often what happens when you don't know why you stuck, it's some perspiration either from yourself or your opponent, and you always have to be aware 
that that can happen. So Bill wipes that heel off, drives the shoe, cross lane for the 10. In this crowd, capacity crowd, is Dave Roberts, distinguished Portland, Oregon uh, sports writer who retired and is now the Northwest Area uh, PR director for the Professional Bowlers Association. Good man. Mm -hmm. And here's a man that likes lane 33. He's seven for seven so far in today's action, going for eight in a row on the left lane. And of course, Dave's boss, Kevin Shippey, Watch that Billy Oaks strike along with all of you. Richardson looks like he's calmed down now. He had a pretty good shot in the first frame, tentative miss the 10 pin. Then he's throwing four good shots since then. A double, solid 10 in mm -hmm. the fourth. Converted that strike up here in the fifth. A strike in the sixth would cut Oaks' lead down to just 11 pins. Smooth delivery, leaving the 10 pin. Well, that's three straight solid tens on the right hand lane for Richardson. Solid 10 in the fourth, solid 10 in the sixth. Bill Oaks had the same fate in the fifth frame, a solid 10. What causes that? It's just the angle of attack to the pockets. I remember my daddy always saying when one round object gets another round object, they don't always necessarily react the same every time. Okay, Ed Richardson at age 32 is a late bloomer on the tour. Here's how he got started. Well, I just started out uh, real young watching a lot of people bowl, and I joined the junior program, and then I got into the junior-senior program, and I started working for a bank, and then also bowling part-time on the regional, and I started doing real well on the regionals, and I decided to go ahead and try and make a go out here, and it's been real good lately in the last year, so I finally got enough knowledge. And uh, we're glad for him. He's a neat guy. And though uh, you mentioned your dad who's back in St. Louis and I'm sure watching, Ed said his father was a pen boy in St. Louis at one time. Yeah, his late father uh, actually brought him into the game. And uh, as many of the older folks uh, learn their game, as uh, we study Bill Oaks studying the lanes, learn their game from the pits forward, so to speak. So he'd like to win one in memory of his pop. Okay, we're in our second match, nearing its end. Bill Oaks, who won the first game, is in the lead by 22. What's in and what's out? King of the Hill, Randy Peterson, by virtue of a victory in the Fresno Open two weeks ago. You'll see him after the champion is determined here. And it could be this man, Bill Oaks, leading by 22. Second game, he won the first match over Curtis Odom, 259 to 169. Well, Chris, you picked it up. You said the uh, more confident, more disciplined mm -hmm. Bill Oaks. He's got that uh, twinkle of win in his eyes. And there's one thing he's doing very well that he hadn't done in other championship round performances is that's maintaining his form throughout the approach and the follow through. He, he's posting that shot as you look at his grip, solid at the line and holding that follow through. Bill spent the last two weeks in Lawton. There's his son who had ear surgery and tonsillectomy. So his priorities are in order. Now he's back at work. So is Ed Richardson. Spare up shooting in the eighth frame, trailing by 42. Tonight, after an all-new episode of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, it's a new night for FBI, The Untold Stories, and American Detective, followed by The Commish. For adventure and police action, stay with ABC tonight. All right, Ed Richardson, as you look at him from the overhead, let's take a look at how he's attacking the lanes. He's about on the right side, and he has a pretty straight approach, drifting slightly to the left, 
And right now, he needs a strike to cut the lead to 32 pins. Pat Dillon, Ed's mom, is watching him bowl along with you. Right now, Oaks can put Richardson away. A strike here in the ninth frame would seal the fate. Well, Chris, we've seen all sorts of hits that yes, look like a pair of strikes on the right-hand lane, but with number of 10 pins, a four pin, and now the solid seven. Remember last week, the solid seven was a pivotal pin in determining the winner of the King of the Hill match as George Branham slid by it. And off to the right, hitching up his slacks. Occasionally throwing a, a bowling ball is Steve Fields, the tournament leader. 5'4", 115 pounds from Stockton, California. And it'll be his first telecast. And it'll be for the championship. Right now, Bill Oaks needs a mark to win this match. Like Rock City. Two wins in a row for Patty Oaks' husband named Bill. He'll be going against Steve Fields, the player you just mentioned, Chris, and mm -hmm. I can't remember a player of that stature bowling in the championship round. 5'4", 115 pounds, as you said, he looks like a, uh, a junior in high school, but he sure can whip that ball through and gets a lot of leverage at the bottom of the swing. He and uh, Chris Warren could uh, meet in an ultra uh, bantamweight <laughs> four-rounder. They're tiny, but... They make up for it with big hearts and wonderful personalities. Bowling's a sport of accuracy, discipline, and leverage. And Fields is very interesting how he gets that leverage. After a 259, a big 238, and a hug from Ed Richardson. This week, Choice Hotels International's Tip of the Week spotlights my sidekick, Bo Burton, as these two will meet soon. ABC Sports presents a winning, never gets old bowling tip brought to you by Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotels. Here's bowling great Dick Weber. Joining me today is 17-time PBA champion, a new member to the senior tour, Bo Burton. Bo, earlier in your career, strength was your dominant factor in generating ball speed. What advice would you give a senior bowler who wants to increase ball speed? Well, Dick, ball speed is more important today than it's ever been because of the modern lanes and the modern bowling ball. And when I was younger, I used a lot of upper body strength to generate ball speed. I stood only 12 foot from the foul line, and I muscled the ball down there. However, as I've gotten older, I've generated more speed through my legs. I take the full approach, almost 17 feet. More foot speed relates to more arm speed, more arm speed, more ball speed. And Dick, I found with the ball speed, I've been very competitive again on the senior tour. So just remember, as you get older, if you want more power and ball speed, all you need is a few minor changes on the approach. After all, winning never gets old. Look for future ABC Sports winning never gets old bowling tips brought to you by Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotels. There are gut balls and gutter balls and sometimes the trophy balls. But no matter what, you'll love the bowlers who have it all on ABC Sports Home Video, Bowling the Perfect Game. Call 1-800-4-ABC-VCR to order bowling's colorful history. Narrated by Chris Schenkel and Nelson Burton, Jr. Charge it on your Visa card for only $14.98 plus $3.95 shipping. That's 1-800-4-ABC-VCR. of Oklahoma, Bill Oaks had his bowling howitzer working in the first match with 10 strikes. Big score. And he got his smaller howitzer working in the second against Ed Richardson, shooting a 238-205. Bill with 17 total strikes in two matches. So now, he meets the tiniest man in the field. First time ever on TV. Stevie Fields, right here in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Bo, you know, 
Not that long ago, the craze, electronic craze, was bull riding. Well, there's a new craze that uses human power. So we want you to see what we call human body bowling. Can you imagine? I'm ready for it. Let's take a look at it. As, uh, I guess this is the first victim. And, of course, you'll see pro bowler Del Ballard after this lady. He'll be strapped in, and he's, there he is. He's going to get an assist from Bob Vespi and Chris Warren. That's the most that Vespi and Warren have got on a ball in about a month or so, it looks like to me. That was a little bit of a light hit by Ballard, wasn't it? Let's see what Chris Warren will do. Oh, a solid hit from the tiniest, other than our finalist here today. We're getting ready for the handshake from Steve Fields. That's right, 5'4", 115 pounds, 24 years old, against Bill Oakes, who has two victories. And here we go. All right, Steve Fields, his dad is a senior bowler on the senior tour. Russ Field has to be proud of this young man. Let's see what happens. Left to 10 fan on the left lane, Russ and Janice. His parents are here along with his grandma, Dee. Look at that personality. <laughs> well, let's see if he can avoid the fate of Ed Richardson in the semifinals, starting with a 10 pin, then missing it in the channel. Important to fill that first frame. Okay, some of the pressure relieved. Now, to maintain the concentration after two big wins, 259 and 238, here's Bill Oaks. A 10. As we go into this championship game, Bill Oaks averaging 243 for his first two matches. He said this to me last night, Chris. Bo, you're going to see something from me on TV today that you've never seen before. I'm fired up, I'm 37 years old, and I'm gonna win my first title. He is nine frames away. However, there's a young man named Steve Fields has something to say about it. Take a look at how Bill Oaks is playing the championship pair. He's going to be about the center or left side. Now watch him slide just about the center of the lane, and his target's going to be just between the first and second arrows. He's mm -hmm. going to walk this line, a little drift left. That's fine in bowling. That makes your swing inside out, and they'll try to get it along this target line. 18th strike of the afternoon for 37-year-old Bill Oaks. Yet to win that elusive PBA national title. It's interesting, Fields, as he's up in the second frame, had a chance to make Oaks finish on this right-hand lane, and he let an Oaks finish on his good lane, the left-hand lane. Well, we're all even after two frames. The young man that went to Delta Junior College in Stockton, California. Solid form at five feet, four inches tall and 115 pounds. You need the high arm swing. He has his wrist cocked. Look at how solid he is on that left foot as he pivots forward into the sliding step and the good high follow through. Excellent form. What beautiful timing. Tempo on that swing. He said that his mental game is by far his best asset. Physically, he said, well, not quite as sharp. However, gets everything he needs into it, doesn't he? No problem, Chris. And you had the, the right thing. It's, it's leverage and tempo. Is right now, Oaks tries to level the match through three frames. This is what a championship game should be. Head to head, shot for shot. That's so, pinfall of Randy Peterson, the king of the hill, staying loose. So far this season, the tournament leader is 14 wins and only five losses, and the num number four man has only one win for the whole season, this being the 20th championship round. Let's see if Oaks can break it and make it two. Okay, a 10-pin lead by Bill Oaks as we are in Seattle, where the waterways are abundant in this area. And here's one way to get from shore to shore, island to island. The 
ever youthful-looking Michael J. Fox in the audience. Now bowling, equally young-looking Steve Fields. Oh, yes. That's to even up the match again. Billy bowling Bill Oaks. What a terrific break. Usually it's the head pin that comes back across. Let's see if it's that same pin, Chris. Yes, it is. Your friend, the scout, mm. became the companion of the 10 pin, knocked it out, and the match is all even through four. Wow. That was different. Okay, and so is what you're about to see. Jim Pinsack will now be with Randy Peterson. Watch. Here we are with the king, Randy Peterson. A title last week, and now you're the king. How's it feel? I'll tell you, Jimmy, it'd feel a lot better if I could snap off another five Gs today. Does that affect your bowling during the finals play, knowing that you're going to be on the show? Well, I think uh, my swing's a little looser because I know that I'm going to be on the telecast, so, uh, you know, a little extra pocket change won't hurt my, my uh, cause any. Well, you are the king, and good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Chris, uh, Randy Peterson looks a little bit like Nero in the old film Quo Vadis. <laughs> okay. Uh, the villain at heart. Right now we have a, a match that's fantastic. Both players spare and four in a row championship match. Ten pen on the left lane. Bill Oaks. As we indicated, Bill was second to my call being Green Bay in 1992. Best ever finish for his opponent was fifth in the Tums Classic this year in Windsor Locks. A lot of 10 pins today. It's over 10 of them left by our four combatants so far. And when you're hitting a pocket on almost every shot, you're going to leave some tens, and that's the most common pocket tap. Tournament leader, Steve Fields, almost didn't make it to the tournament this week, and he tells us why. Um, last, last Friday, I was involved in an uh, automobile accident coming home from uh, a regional uh, in San Jose. I was on my way home, and um, in a thunderstorm, I had hit like a, a slick in the road, spun me around, threw me off the highway. I had rolled down twice. Uh, the roof was caved in. I walked away from it, um, went to the convenience store, called home, uh, got some help, and uh, I was okay enough to uh, fly up here and, uh, and bowl this week. It is a bowling. Wow, I guess. He now has a 21-pin lead over Bill Oaks, who won the first two matches. This is for the title. More of it after this. the Oregon Open when ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour returns in two weeks. Bill Oaks from Lawton, Oklahoma. Two victories averaging over 240 now. He really has his work cut out for him against young Steve Fields. He trails by 21, spare up, shooting in the seventh. Tomorrow, ABC Sports kicks off with our first look at the United States World Cup team in action. That's right. They'll meet Germany in U.S. Cup 93. Live action begins at 1 Eastern, 12 noon Central and Pacific. Then, Indy cars hit the streets of the Motor City for the ITT Automotive Detroit Grand Prix. And later, take an inside look at golf's national championship, the United States Open preview featuring Jack Nichols. Big, big double for Bill Oaks. Well, you're right, Chris, there. He sucked it up there in the seventh and eighth frames. There was a little lull in the action. The crowd favorite, the young Russ Fields, uh, Steve Fields, Russ Fields' his father, has kind of the crowd on his side, but now it's come to crunch time for the first championship. Look at him. He's never won a regional title. And is mom happy? Why not? Right now, 
Steve Fields can bowl 290 and Billy Oaks 269. This match is far from over. Right now, Steve Fields has put Oaks in a must situation. Bill Oaks a must strike on this ball to have any chance. If he doesn't strike here, Steve Fields has won his first championship. Oh, you add a little more speed to that shot. All right, he's 37 years old. He's been a PBA member for more than a decade. He's come down to a position where if he strikes out, he will force Fields to strike in the 10th. Bill Oaks has got to reach back and throw the best balls he's thrown in his life right here. Sure. Partner, there is no doubt you are absolutely correct. He just labeled it. He is a man committed, and he will not lose this match. He may get beaten, but he will not lose it. This is his best performance, as this young man still doesn't have it won. There Who can do it in a tenth? There will only be a runner-up, no losers. They both should win. <laughs> performance perfection professionals of the PBA his reaction championship type shot just rips the rack open now what this has done is set up a, a scenario where Oaks can win fields could win or we could have a tie great matches in the 32 years, Bo, that I've been doing this series on ABC. When you have a veteran, older at 37, and you have this 24-year-old first time on TV. To win it outright, he must strike on this ball. by Bill Oaks and you have to know how it pains Bill to be runner up in this game there's Bill two solid ten pins right now this fields only needs five pins that's a winner right there it's gonna be 279 to 269 and Bill is saying with that handshake what do you have to do Chris, the scoring system got Bill Oaks. If you look at the game, Fields left two solid tens, and he had eight strikes. If you look at Bill Oaks, all he had is two solid tens and strikes. It's where you get him. A hug from mom and dad. 279 to 269. And uh, King of the Hill will be next with Randy Peterson. He doesn't look quite as young now, does he? First time winner. ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Boaters Tour will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. What an afternoon at Skyway Park Bowl. Bill Oaks, one of the stars, 259 game over Curtis Odom in the first match. He moved up in our stepladder approach, 238-205 over Ed Richardson. Then he met 24-year-old Steve Fields. What a pitched battle. 279, 269. Fields, first time ever on TV, has won his first championship. Runner-up Bill Oaks at 11, Ed Richardson 7,500, and Curtis Odom $6,000. So we have a Seattle Open champion in youthful looking Stevie Fields, Bell. And it's time for our Kellogg's King of the Hill match. It should be an interesting match, Chris. We'll see what Fields has left. He's going against Randy Peterson, the Randy the veteran who last week needed three strikes to defeat George Branham by one pin. Here's his final shot. He needs this strike to win the King of the Hill match. Perfect. 
Look at that celebration. And it was against his friend and roommate, George Branham III. Well, we'll see what Peterson can do here. He finished 24th in this field of 160 players. Uh, Steve Fields may have just shot all he had in that one game match against uh, Bill Oaks, who bowled so good. So we'll see what happens. $5,000 at stake. And a little psyching going on by the veteran Randy Peterson, who has nine titles, including the PBA National Championship in 1987. So here is the king without the robe and crown. First shot. Two Californians. A little psyching by Randy Peterson, who is 10 inches taller and weighs more than 50 pounds more. As we've seen some of these King of the Hill matches go before, there's a mm -hmm. little levity at the start, but as the action picks up after three or four frames, they start thinking about about 5,000 bucks. That was like my first shot. Stay there. Stay there. Mentioned a useful look of Steve, like the useful look of <laughs> Michael J. Fox, who is starring in yeah, a well, movie about bowling called Greed. Well, Randy Peterson, out. Steve's opponent, has been uh, helping along with John Petraglia technically with Michael J. Now they're calling each other pards. I love it. <laughs> well, Randy's his pards right now on the, on the bench, but when he steps on that approach, he's thinking about that, those bucks. Randy with the full grip, extended index finger, high back swing. Peterson, King of the Hill, he is 1-0, and, oh, and now we're rubbing it in. Randy, one of the good natural athletes we have on the PBA Tours, he's good at almost everything he does. Has that five-step delivery where he gets a lot of momentum and leverage in the ball. Right now, he started the King of the Hill match with two strikes. opponent's backs. You can always do that when you're 20 pins ahead. That's on too much fall now. Thank you. <laughs> you live for the thumb, you leave something. You live for the fingers, you leave something. The solid nine. Phenomena of today's bowling game. The reactive resin bowling balls have no respect for three pounds, six ounce pins. All right, the second spare by Steve Fields, and you see three in a row, Randy. Now in the fourth for Steve. A ten. Better it happened now than in I that match with Bill Oaks. Strike, solid 10, solid 9, solid 10 for Steve Fields. Sure. Got some Geritol in the back for him? <laughs> what variety here in the Northwest? If you want to go sailing in the Seattle area, you can try Puget Sound. Peterson's bride, Becky, watching her husband, who is the king of the hill, after winning in Fresno two weeks ago. He's going against the Seattle Open winner, Steve Fields. Three in a row for Randy Peterson, fourth frame. Looks 
like a light hit, but strike. Randy with a contemporary form five-step delivery built around a six feet two inch frame. He gets the high backswing, wrist cuffed in this area here. Now he has to delay it and wait for his timing step to come on through. He rolls the ball solidly, good knee dip, deep knee bend. See how he stays underneath the ball. What an excellent shot that is. Look at the position of the hand and arm going to target. After the strike and three spares, striking in the fifth frame of this King of the Hill match. Steve Fields from Stockton, California, our number one rated bowler from Stockford, Walter Ray Williams Jr. Watch how close this man from Stockton quickly up on the approach gets to the foul. Almost looks like he goes over. Ain't no funny stuff here. No funny stuff. You're gonna carry it. First time that Steve Fields has missed the pocket in a game and a half in today's championship round. The last time Randy Peterson had five strikes in a row to open a championship round game was against Marshall Holman, 1987 in the PBA National Championship. He defeated Holman 289 to 180 in that game. Randy is hot. How can I do all this, Steve? Against Holman, he started with 10 strikes in a row leaving before leaving a 10 pin. If he can take it off the sheet, as we say in professional bowling, with six more strikes, he'll pick up an additional 10 grand on top of the King of the Hill 5,000. Seventh frame. Oh, he needs five. Go, Randy. Well, I didn't throw it like that. Well. <laughs> Four pin for Steve Fields. It's all right. You won the tournament. I know. You felt great. For Fields from the overhead. You'll see him right down the center of the lane. Consolation. Just a little soft with his ball speed. Kind of the winds taken out of his sails as Peterson started with seven in a row. I'm not squeezing it now. Shot indigenous today's contemporary game, okay. the reactive resin ball, splicing yeah, those three pound right seven ounce pins, the head pin, as Chris Schenkel likes okay, to call it, the now. scout doing the damage.
That's what he said. Oh, he yanked it just slightly inside target. The ball skidded too far down the lane, didn't make the flip. Ends up with an easy eight pin spare and match in hand. Yeah. King of the Hill match is over. <laughs> Best this a young man can do is 227. That's right. <laughs> Which means one thing, Bob. We'll undoubtedly see the robe and the crown two weeks from today in Portland, Oregon. And Randy Peterson, a uh, somewhat levitous Randy Peterson at this point, will be going for a bonus of $10,000 for a third consecutive win. There's a young man that um, won a lot of fans today by his performance in a championship match against Bill Oaks, 279 to 269. Steve Fields only missed the pocket one time in today's action. 279 in the championship match. He'll be in the 220s in the King of the Hill match. And of course, you can't say enough for Bill Oaks. 259, 238, 269, runner up. Well, this is kind of uh, anticlimactic, isn't it? <laughs> started with eight in a row came up in the ninth frame and here's the key watch the ball be just a little bit left the target and it'll stay in the oil a little too long you see him over the third arrow he had been out closer to the second arrow you see the ball sailing 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 gets down about 47 feet before it flips the head pin takes out the two but the damage had been done Boy, he'd like to have that shot back that was a ten thousand dollar bowling ball look at him shaking that finger one right. shot <laughs> Boy, what great scoring, huh? Today, Chris, the TV pair average coming into today, into this final game, was 236, despite the 169 game in the opening match by Odom. So they really knocked the lights out. King of the Hill and hugged by Becky. 279 Randy Peterson, 227 for Steve Fields. And what an average he had today as the crown arrives. <laughs> 115 pounds. The king is strong. Steve Fields, the Seattle Open champion. We'll be back to talk to them after this. On today, Stevie Fields, first championship, 21,000. Not second, but runner-up, Bill Oaks, and so on down the line. So, young man, it does come in small packages. Yes, it does. This is exciting. I don't know what to say. Uh, I'd like to thank... Uh, all the fans here at Skyway Park Bowl, this is fabulous. Great crowd, great crowd. Uh, and uh, Mr. Dave Pardee, Rod Pardee, thanks for hosting the tournament. Did a great job all week. Um, I'm supposed to say that I'm uh, going to Disneyland now, but I got a better place. <laughs> the General Tire Fire oh, Tournament of Champions. That's General right. Tire Tournament of Champions. We got that now. You got it. I'm going right. to come back to you. I'm going to come back to you because of the king. We the got king. it. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Chris. I'll tell you. Uh, I can't take anything away from Steve. He won the tournament, and he bowled fantastic. Uh, Bill Oaks bowled fantastic. It looked like it was going to be a tie, and, and Stevie came through. So he, he deserves all the credit. We knew you had good taste in automobiles. You also have in ladies. Oh, yeah, I have the most beautiful wife in the world. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. How many years? Two years. Just uh, celebrated our second uh, anniversary in uh, May, May, May 26th. So I got that right, honey, see? With all our best wishes. With all our best wishes, would you give Becky this five thousand dollars? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, Becky, it's okay. You can come out. 
But right now, first time national television. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm like, I was shaking, I'm scared. But uh, luck was on my side this week. Your mom and dad being here didn't hurt. No, they uh, helped out quite a bit, and grandma and all that. They came yeah. down. Grandma D? Yeah, uh, they came down yesterday for the final block, and uh, okay. I bowled good last night, and they helped out. Yeah. And uh, it was just fantastic. What a week. It's been amazing. Let's get to the money oh, with God. David Pardee and Rod Pardee. Well, let's see. Let's go to the check first, Rod. Ooh. Nice bowling, Steve, for your first championship here in Skyway Park Bowl. Here's a nice check for $21,000. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now that uh, something tangible, here is David Pardee. Steve, you bowled great all week. What a final match today. <laughs> nice bowl, and here's your first place plaque. Hope you have many more. Oh, thanks a lot. Thank you. There you go. We again congratulate you. And I know that you'd want to hear, want uh, the audience to hear from the runner-up to you, Billy Oaks. So we're going to go to Bo right now. Bo? Thank you, Chris. Bill Oaks, uh, one of the great performances I've ever seen with, and not come away with a PBA championship. What are your thoughts? I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I did, uh, I just feel like I did all I could. Uh, threw the ball as good as I know how, and uh, if destiny's on your side, you'll win, and I guess today it wasn't meant to be, but next time I get there, I'll just do it again. Bill Oaks, you're one of the great champions, one of the most likable players on the PBA Tour. As Chris Sankel said, you didn't get loose today. You were beaten, and Young Fields did a nice job. Oh, Steve bowled great. Uh, he deserves all the credit in the world. He bowled great for his first time on television, and I'm just happy I gave him a run for his money. All right, Bill, you'll be back. Chris, you're with a great new champion. And I'm with a, a much too young-looking grandma. D, you can't be this youngster's grandma. I'm his grandmother from Stockton, California, and I'm very, very proud of my grandson. Congratulations, Janice and Russ. Thank you. Oh, we're so proud. We're so Very happy. proud of you. And of course, you did all the work, pal. Yeah, well, it was quite a bit of work. Like Are you in Portland, Oregon? Yeah, I'd like to thank all my sponsors that got me out here. If it wasn't for them, I never got here. And we want to thank our sponsors, too. Yeah. We'll see you in Portland, Oregon, two weeks from today. Goodbye, everyone. The executive producer of ABC's sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour is Jack O'Hara. Produced by Carol Letty. Directed by Doug Wilson. Technical Director, Michael Carmen, Associate Director, Russell Brooks. Technical Operations Manager, Dennis Sabo. Production Manager, Joe Alvarado. Assistant to the Producer, Rico LeBay. The Professional Bowlers Tour has been brought to you by... Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. By quality, comfort.